Uh, we back. We back, baby. Four. Happy 4th of July. Happy 5th of July. Uh, gun show. We're getting everything set up today. Uh, gun show. Um, but, man, we got Gorilla a, Mike. We got, Gorilla you, knew, you knew Gorilla Mike would be on. We got a special day today uh, for everybody. Today we're talking to the parents. Mm-hmm. We're talking to the parents today, and we are uh, we're diving in. And who doesn't want more out of their kids, right? Who doesn't want more out of the kids? And that's what exactly what we're going to be diving into today. But first, we got to know, how did your 4th of July go? Everybody, do this. Do this. I want to – you got your fingers still? Everybody's okay. still got 10 of them? Everybody's still got Man. the phalanges. Got to make sure you got your phalanges. It's hard to play uh, baseball or lacrosse or uh, swim or do a lot of different things without your fingers. It's hard to eat, hard to use a fork, right? You got to be able to – I have those fingers, so oh. glad nobody blew up their fingers. I hope not. You guys I hope not. Remember when Jason Pierre Paul blew his fingers off? I do. Yeah, that he's like like this now, playing football like this. You know, he can't do that. What's happening, everybody? I heart B ball. What's, what's up, happening? Shannon? What's happening, Mike? What's happening, man? Woo. So like blessed it. to have you guys on once again. Twelve thirty, uh, Crucible TV every Friday at twelve thirty, and we know you know. We weren't going to miss today. We had a great workout yesterday morning, pumping the guns up. You know, if any day's a good day to get some bicep curls in. Big ball of Mason, July. what's happening? Bryson, what's happening, man? So, Bryson, man, what's happening, baby? We so, miss you in here, Bryson. I'll tell you what. Oh, we're going to jump right into it today. Again, so today's concept, today's idea. Who, parents, this, this is directed at you. If you're a parent, listen up. Listen in. Because all I ever hear is, how do I get more out of my kids? How do I get them motivated? And I want you to imagine a world where your kid is motivated. They are getting up. They're doing the different things that you're wanting to, them to do, right? So often we hear about, man, my kid's just on his phone all the time, or uh, they're just not motivated to go out and play anymore. Uh, so, hey, we want to give you our top four ways to get the most out of your kid. How do we get your kid just addicted to getting better and, and doing doing the good stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Not just um, just wasting time. Time's one of those awesome things, uh, our most valuable commodity, but how do we not just waste it? So parents, listen up, listen in. We're going to dive right into it. Let's so do it. Th- I got my little girl over here. So uh, maybe she'll make a guest appearance if you hang on tight. Maybe uh, baby, baby Aria will pop in and give you a couple – uh, smiles, hopefully. She's just doing box jumps right now. So. Yeah, yeah, she's finished it. She's three and a half months old. Three and a half months old. She's getting her squirmies in, yep. and uh, she's just finishing up her uh, her lunges. And her leg kicks. And her leg kicks. Yep, yep. She's getting those in, and the arm, arm swings. Arm swings. So, awesome. Hey, what's happening, guys? I love it. So, here we go. Number one, step number one. Parents, if you want the most to get the most out of your kids, first thing we got to do is help create a vision, right? Help them to create a vision of where they're going right if we just tell them you need to do something probably not gonna listen to you probably not gonna listen (laughs) you don't like it when people just tell you to do stuff right but if you can help them help them create a vision of all this hard work that we're talking about where's it harder to get them to want to do that right so be sure that you're you're showing them and modeling to them why it's so important to do these things. What's what's the end of all this hard work look like, right? So that's one of the first things that we can do. If I gave you an all expense paid vacation, I, I'm, I'm giving you a vacation, Joey. Get, right, I'm ready. You ready for this? Okay. What would you do? What was the first thing? I, all expense paid. What would you do? Well, we. My wife and I would probably find out where we're going to stay, yep. where we're going to eat, what yep. we're going to do every hour of the day, yeah. where are we going, what sites are we going to see. Uh-huh. Yeah. And like how, how like this vision, are, are you getting excited about oh, yeah. it? Like oh, it's yeah. like I know exactly what I'm doing mm-hmm. and I know why I'm, you know, now what happens if I tell you, well, I'm giving you all expense paid trip, but you're going to tell you where to go. Well, <laughs> I'm going to tell you where to go, but let's say this, uh, but you have to take a red eye flight. You, you have to take like four, yep, four layovers to get mm. there. Four layovers, right? Layovers. And um, you're, you're, you're not going to be first class. Are you still going to go? Are you still going to go? Yeah. It doesn't matter how hard it is. I just gave you an all-expense paid vacation. <laughs> you, love the, you love what's on the other side of all that uncomfortable, all that nasty stuff, right? Same thing with our kids. So often now, we don't show our kids or tell our kids or explain to our kids why all this hard work is important. 
or what's on the other side of that hard work. And they don't have anything to really get fired up about. Oh, yes, I want to be a better baseball player. Okay, cool, whatever. Like, what, what does a better baseball player mean to them? Like, mm -hmm. what does it feel like? What does it smell like? What does it taste like? Like, why is it important to be a better baseball player? Why is it important to stay off of my phone? Why is it important to read a book? Why is it important to do my stretches? Why, if, if they don't understand why and why all that stuff builds up into something great on the other side, it's going to be hard to motivate them to do that. So one of the best things you can do is sit down and you parents, this might be something for you too. You might have to have a, a time to write your own vision. All right. Absolutely. We might be stuck in a spot where like, I'm just living life day to day, just whatever comes my way and I react to it. Well, if we do that as parents, guess what our kids probably going to do? They're going to model it. Probably the same thing. Right. So maybe the first part of this is we have to sit down as parents and say, where am I going? What am I doing? Um, Where's this family going? Yeah. You know, yeah, what's, what's, where are we going as a group? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. And if we can do that, right, first as the parent, then we can go out and, and show and teach our kids, hey, this is how you set a vision up. This is why you have to work hard. And this is, you know, the, this is the importance of working hard. So Absolutely. I, I think having that working, vision. Working hard is not easy. It's not. Working hard is not easy. <laughs> Sacrificing things is not easy. But if, if, if you have the if you have the clear vision, if you have the path of where you want to go, mm -hmm. then that makes the sacrificing that much easier day by day. Amen to that. Amen to that. So some some real cool for me. I just looked over. I don't know if you saw it. I got my dad over there with my daughter, and they're just like chilling over there. Getting their minds, you can't right? see them. But I think you want to talk about something just so cool. And like this is where my head's going because since I just had her, you know. What, what is the, the vision that I want her to have? Mm -hmm. Like, I want her to have her goals, her dreams. They're not going to be my goals and dreams for her. They're going to be how can I help empower her to achieve her goals, her dreams. So absolutely help them create that vision. I think that's step number one into getting the most out of uh, our kids, right? Boom. There we go. Any questions? Be sure you're popping them in. Any yeah. comments? Be sure to pop them in. On Facebook, I hopefully – What's up, Seamus? Let me know on Facebook if you're seeing this. We got some, like, thing that's saying it's trying to reconnect – uh, yeah. I don't know if we're live or not, but hey, if we're not, we'll keep going anyways. But let yeah, us know. Keep going, baby. Let us know comment in if we're going. comment in if we're still alive. We're trying. So here we go. Step number two. Step number two for getting the most out of your kids. I think it's important that we set guardrails. Okay, guardrails, and this is something that uh, my dad always talked about doing with me. I didn't really realize he was doing it, right? But setting guardrails, and what do I mean by that? If you're on the road, right? You got a road, you got a path, but then you got the guardrails on either side, right? He gave me the freedom to make decisions within those guardrails, mm -hmm. right? I don't think it's good. I mean, at the end of the day, what are we trying to do? We're trying to help our kids make great decisions when it's toughest to make a great decision, right? Now, if we just tell them all the time, this is the decision you must make, they're not learning how to make good decisions. Because guess what? And I bet you can agree with this, You've probably made some bad decisions, haven't you? You are live. Love your topic for today. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Appreciate that. Oh, is that, is that grandma? That's grandma. grandma. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, by the way, pop has got a crucible hat on. Ooh. Look at that. He's rocking it right now. Oh, wow. I love that. Wow. Up in New Jersey. I wish we could get a photo of that. Yeah, Ooh, that would fire grandma, me up. You think you get, get a photo of pop Ooh. with a crucible hat on? There we so, go. Pop that in. I love that. That fire me up. So, I, no, that was awesome. So, <laughs> here we go. So, we got to make sure that we're making great decisions and learning how to make great decisions. And unfortunately or fortunately, we have to make some bad decisions sometimes to learn, ooh, that's not a good way to make it. Now as parents, now as parents, it gets so easy to want to try to control. Coaches, it gets so easy to try to, uh, to control, right? Control my players. I'm going to call every single pitch as, as a coach because I don't want my catcher uh, to make a mistake, so I'm just going to call the pitch. Let's teach them to call the pitch. Let's teach them to make the play on the rugby pitch, right? How do we empower our athletes to do that? So we have to give them guardrails, right? Give them guardrails. Because big picture, you know, if, if all we do as coaches and as parents is control every move that our kids make, whenever we get into the real world, what's going to happen? Right. We're that, not going to have anybody to, oh, well, what am I supposed to do here? You know, we're, we're going to constantly go back to Oh, mom, dad, what should I do in this situation? And yeah. they're, they're never going to be able to make those make those decisions when it's toughest to make them. 
And um, I think, I think too, I, I read something this morning. I, I'm reading a book called Conscious Coaching by Brett Bartholomew. Mm-hmm. Awesome book. Great really book. Great, great, read. great book. And I read something as coaches develop as people first and athletes second. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, I could, I could never imagine being a parent, but I think it would be the same thing as, you know, we get so caught up in, you know, maybe putting our kids on different sports teams and things like that. We're thinking, how can we take them to the next level when they're on the field and, and whatnot, but just – Slow it down, breathe. They're kids, you know. They're kids. Mm-hmm. Just focus on being kids, having fun, you know. Um, something I think we do sometimes. We get so caught up in, in the workout, and we're like, "Oh, we're gonna move to this set and that set." And sometimes we just gotta do a better job of just letting the kids just run around a little bit and and just let loose, you know, let loose. And I think that goes into the guardrails, mm-hmm. right? We got to give them the guardrails to, and we try to set this up purposely here to where we give them the opportunity not make good decisions, right? So that way we can teach them. So if we give them a little bit of extra leash, they can get distracted if they want to, but it gives us an opportunity to say, hey, remember, why are we here? Let's focus in. Mm -hmm. And it turns into a teaching moment. Now, I think the thing about guardrails, and this is, again, for parents, coaches, how do we respond when one of our athletes or our kids jump that guardrail? Because guess what? They're going to jump over to the other side of the guardrail, just like you did, oh, yeah. right? Just like you did. How are we going to respond to our kid or our athlete when they do that? And I found the worst way to do it is just to pound them and pounce on them and say, mm-hmm. man, you shouldn't have done that, boom, boom. And we're just like, we're irate with it, right? Worst way to do it, right? One of the best ways that we can then coach is to show that love, to show that empathy, to show that we care. Because guess what? We know what it feels like to be on that other side of that that bad decision. More times than not, they're not going to feel good about making that bad decision. So coming in and, and slamming them all of a sudden, boom, 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 you're, you're, your athlete's going to shut down. Yep. You're going to get this motion instead of like the, okay, I'm, I'm coached through it and I feel the love here. I think it really comes down to just that love, uh, feeling love at the end of the day. So if you jump over the, the, the guardrail, you made a bad decision. Let's talk about it. Give them some time to process it. But, hey, let's talk about why. Mm-hmm. Again, it'll come back to why. Why was that a bad decision? Why is that not going to be something that's going to benefit you in the long run? Why is it important to make a better decision? Right? Because, again, if they don't know why that decision's bad, well, I'm just going to keep doing it. Why is the guardrail set here? Well, we're not letting you drink soda before the workout <laughs> <laughs> because it's not going to turn out well. We're going to have you puking in the bathroom. Right? <laughs> Ten <laughs> minutes ago. Even right? Oh, right? right? Oh, what? Even if it's mellow yellow. Mellow yellow, yeah. Mellow <laughs> yellow, no good. Right? <laughs> so we got to have those guardrails and show that love, show that empathy, and let them know that you truly care and you're there with them in that moment, not above them telling them what they did wrong. I, I find that that never, ever, ever, ever turns out well. You got to show and teach and have that that come down to their level and say, hey, this is why it's important to make a better decision in this. And this is why long-term, why we don't uh, want to do that. So even when I get an athlete in the cage and we're, you know, we're going through the hitting process, Mm -hmm. I don't sit there and say, hey, you have to do this. Yeah. You know, like I I give them the option, like, hey, you can do it this way, but this is what you're going to get. And this is why I want you to fix it. And, mm-hmm. I, and I think that that makes the kid trust you more. It makes yeah. the athlete trust you more rather than just, hey, do this because I said so. Right. You know what I mean? Never works. Explain Never why. works. Explain why. Yep, Explain absolutely. why. Absolutely. And I think another one um, that kind of goes along with this is the guardrails thing. Teaching them how to deal with that failure or that bad decision, athletes, parents, we're going to have bad games, right? We're going to have bad games. Oh, yeah. Okay? It, oh, it just, yeah. It's got, if you go high enough in, in sports or in life, like you're going to have a bad day. Setting a – having a, a plan together as a family, and this helps release tension. Any parents out there want to release tension, right, immediately after a bad game, give your kid and have a, a set time of like, okay, here's your window. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour, whatever it is. Here's your window that you can feel sorry for yourself or whatever it is. But then we got to move on, right? Yeah. But as a parent, we don't go hounding them, telling them everything that they did wrong. Like, why'd you strike out on that pitch? Why'd you swing out, of, swing at that ball in the dirt? Why didn't you hustle that out? Like, they already know what they should have done. Mm-hmm. They've, they already know. But give them that 30-minute window, that 15-minute window. But 
to, to, to whatever it is, just to get out of that funk. But then again, it comes to together. We've got to come to a together agreement. I am going to have 30 minutes. I'm going to have 15 and then I'm moving on, right? Whatever it is. I had the same conversation with my wife when I was still playing. She would, you know, I, I needed my 15 minutes after a game. <laughs> and she said, Ryan, you got 15 minutes. Yep. All right. And I'd be upset or whatever it was. And she'd say, Ryan, 15 minutes is up. Let it go. All right, good. Next. Like, I'm back with family. I'm back with whatever yep. it was. No, I have no time to, to feel bad about myself anymore, right? Because we need to have that communication there. That's, when is it okay to start talking about these things? And I'll tell you, immediately after a, a bad game is the one of the worst times to start telling yep. uh, a kid – Hey, you should have done this better. Because guess what? They don't want to hear it. Just they know. yeah, they know. They know they, they know. should have swung at the ball up here. They know they should have hustled it out. They know they should have whatever. Right? I, I think I think that's a big problem, especially baseball, man. Like yeah, how, how, it's many, how many sport. how many times do we see it when we go watch little league games? Yeah, you know, little little Timmy strikes out on a pitch at his chin. Yeah, he knows he shouldn't have swung at that. Yeah, exactly. But then you have his dad in the dugout, just like giving them an earful. Right. Well, what's that do for the kid? I always think of it like this. This is interesting. When a dog starts barking at another dog, what happens? What happens? They start barking back. They start barking back. And it just becomes a big emotional roller coaster. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and as we know, good things aren't said when we're operating under high emotions. Yeah. You know, and, and decisions, good decisions aren't made when we're operating on high emotions. No, oh, I agree. I agree. And uh, I think really with that 15 minutes is you can take that 15 minutes and so many other things too. Like you need to have a conversation with somebody in your family, but you're upset. The mm -hmm. worst time to have a conversation is when you're thinking with your emotions. Oh, you yeah. Know what I mean, so take that 15 minutes, get your right headspace, that good yeah. frame of mind, and then communicate it out versus right there and then too. Drew, I like it, man. I like <laughs> it, baby. There we go. He's hey, like, I'm getting in tomorrow, I like baby. I love that. Let's Drew's go. ready to rock and roll. He had a, uh, uh, he had a pretty good, pretty good, uh, pretty good year, right? Huh? Pretty yeah. Good year. Mr. Drew Yates, absolutely. I love it. Mike popped in here, and he's talking about this same thing. He said a little bit of parenting tactic too, especially for toddlers. Give one option, and they'll fight it every time. Give them choices or an option and a path to pick, and they jump on board much easier. Mm. They have. Uh, they have then put their own decision into the path they set. Amen. And that's exactly what uh, we're talking about, about how, how do we create What's this up, vision? Katie? What's the What's path that they want to be on, right? Because you can tell them the path, but if you tell them the path, it's what, whatever. They've got to have skin in the game and, and all why behind it, a fire behind why are we doing this. So 100%. You're I'll right. tell you what, though, man. Whenever, whenever you get a kid all in – that's when the cool things happen. That, absolutely. Like, like they're, they're just kind of hovering around like, oh, do I really want to do this? No, mm -hmm. I want to play video games. Like they're hanging out in yeah. between. Yeah. But once you get them to commit, mm -hmm. holy cow, man, you, you see some really special things happen with your, with your athletes on and off the field. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. Man, what do we got? We got Minnie Manny. Minnie I'm, Manny's Who's giving... weird? Who, I'm what? weird. You weird. I only like Joey. Well, I mean. You got to feel sorry for him every once in a while with those tiny arms of his, you know. I tell you, I get it. Hey, there you go. Fan, oh, I like fan, it, Manny. Fan club for you. I like that. Yes. Look at that, Joey. Fan, fan club. Right fan club. I fan like club. it. I like it. So here we go. Step number three. If you want to get the most out of your kids, step Ooh, I number like three. This one, Coach Ryan. I hmm. like this one. We talk about winning streaks, right? Catch your kids doing as many things right as possible. Celebrate. Hey, guess what? Celebrate them. We're on Crucible TV. We're on Crucible TV. Winning Love. streak. Winning streak, Win. right? When catch your kids doing great things. So often, kids when uh, they they get so used to as soon as a parent or somebody um, comes at them, it's like, oh, what did I do wrong? And body language tenses up. No, catch them doing great things. Mm -hmm. Let them know when when they're doing something great. So often, and I'll tell you what, this is kind of just a relationship thing or family thing. Let your family know, or let your wife know, or your spouse, or whomever. Let them know when you find them doing something great. You're going to get so much more out of them. And all of a sudden, that's going to be kind of like a dopamine hit, right? And all of a sudden, they're going to start getting addicted to doing good things. Like, hey, man, you don't have to reward them with money. I'm not, like, big on that. But, like, just let them know, hey, I'm proud of you for doing this. Great job. Hey, awesome job. I noticed that you emptied the dishwasher today. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that. 
them know you appreciate them. Let them know that you appreciate them. Hey, thanks for taking the trash out today. I appreciate that. Don't just assume like, oh, they're supposed to do that. Like, no, you're not. They're kids. They're, they're kids. And guess what? You as a husband or a wife, I know there's moments that when you unload the dishwasher and your spouse doesn't notice, you get upset. You just want <laughs> a, like, a, hey, thanks so much. Here's a little back scratch or whatever it is. Yeah. Right? Like, I, you're the same way. Your kids are the same way. Treat them the same exact way. Find them doing good things. And that, guess what? They're going to start doing more good things. They're going to start doing the stuff that you want them to do. Right? But catch them doing good stuff, not... Why didn't you clean your room again? Why didn't you do this? Well, when they do it, praise them. Like, hey, you didn't, I didn't ask you to do it. Thanks so much for that. You know, and that's just a, whether it's a business management thing, whether it's a relationship thing, a coaching thing. Hey, I, I noticed uh, you, you were, went out to throw with uh, the right fielder. Hey, thanks for doing that. I appreciate you. Guess what? That kid's going to be running out there every single inning to go warm up the right fielder. Absolutely. Whatever it is. I, hey, I noticed you cheering loudly on the bench. I know you weren't in. Right, but in, in the game, but I noticed you were you were amping the kids up. Thanks so much for that. They're all of a sudden going to be doing all kinds of good stuff for you above and beyond. So I, I catch them doing good stuff. Go I tell you what, there was a there was a really cool moment for me. So one of our, I was at a little league game last weekend watching an yeah. all star game, and one of our athletes' parents, I, I was out there and I was sitting with him, and you know his kid had four hits. He was four for five. Mm -hmm. You know, he, yeah, he made, he popped up once and made mm -hmm. an out. And, you know, he, he was getting a little emotional on defense, you know. Yep. They were giving up runs and he was getting upset and stuff. I look over at the parent. The parent's just watching, mm -hmm. not saying a word, mm -hmm. like not yelling at the kid from 300 feet away. Yep. Not like he wasn't even cheering really loud. And, yep. and I'm like, man, you don't say much, do you? And he's like, honestly, I let my son know before before he goes out and plays, man, I really enjoy watching you play. Man. And I said, well, you don't say much from out here. And he goes, nothing I, nothing I say from this far away is going to change anything about the game. Yeah, I could scream at the umpire all I want. It's not going to change anything. No. I could scream at my kid at shortstop, just made an error, not going to change anything. They already know. They already know. He already knows. He so I'm just going to watch, and I'm going to enjoy my son mm -hmm. play. I'm going to enjoy right. watching him play. And that was, like, really special to me. I'm like, that man, is cool. that's awesome. And that's what it's that all about. Awesome. Manny, Manny, how much do I need to join Crucible? Hey, shoot us a message. Uh, DM me. I'll, I'll talk to you all about what it takes to get in here and rock. And, uh, DM me. That'd be awesome. Or Joey. Drew Yates. Baseball is a great game. The only thing is you will fail more than you succeed. We go through life, you know, thinking 80, 90, 100% is good. But – Baseball 300 is good. Biggest thing for me over the last two years, I've had to control my emotions when I fail. Yeah. Ever since I fixed my fixed my swing, I've had big improvements. But we all have those bad days. It just goes to show you. Perfect, man. Yeah. How That's you awesome. deal with them? So and the thing about awesome. Drew, he was hitting about 550 through the first 12 games, and then he hit a little slow stretch. You know, he had like three or four games where he, you know, he may he might have had one hit over four games. Yeah. It happens. You know, you got to ride that roller. Baseball mm -hmm. is that game, man. You got to ride the roller coaster. Yeah. The only way you get hurt on a roller coaster mm -hmm. is if you jump off. Don't. Is if you quit. Don't jump off. Don't jump off the ride roller it. coaster. Ride, ride the roller coaster, baby. Lock in and ride. It's it. going to take you great places when you learn how to ride the roller. That's coaster. right. So, so there you go. Step number three: find your kids doing great mm -hmm. things. Get it. Get them addicted to doing good stuff, and don't hound them. Hounding them's not going to do anything. So. Catch them doing great stuff. I, you like it. You like it when your spouse finds you doing good stuff. Do that with your kids. And, so, and I okay. guarantee too, showing that appreciation. You know, you're talking about that dopamine hit. Yeah. It's not only like for the person receiving the appreciation, expressing that appreciation too. You'll start to feel good saying, "I, I appreciate you," or yeah, you know, like I'm grateful you did that. You'll start to feel good. You'll start Amen. to count your wins right there. So, there you go. Give somebody a high five today. How about that? Give somebody. a I want you guys to high give fives. five different people a high five today. High five. Five today. different people. So there we go. That's three steps. Help create a vision with your kids. Set those guardrails, right? What's up, And Jeff? then catch them doing man, great baby. things. And then step number four, and this probably is the hardest one, hardest one for us parents, hardest thing for us parents to do to get the most out of our kids. Mm -hmm. Model it yourself. Do it yourself. 
Ooh, that one hurts. Well, mm. Ryan, like, punch, you know, like I don't Gut have punch. time to do these things. I, I, sure I want my kid uh, not to be on their iPad so much, but, um, you know, I've got to catch up. Um, on, I, I've been at work all day, and I just got to catch up on what's going on at, 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 in life, right? I, I got to catch up. And But my, my kid, they haven't been there, so they don't need to be on it. Stay off of it. If you don't want them to be on their phone or their iPad or whatever at certain times of day, you do it first. Because, again, if they, if they see you doing what you're telling them not to do, they're going to check out and say, like, why, why am I going to do that or why am I not going to do that? You know, hey, you need to eat better. Okay, you need to eat better first and show them, hey, stop eating junk food. Parents stop buying the junk food, right? You know, we gotta we gotta take accountability for ourselves first. That's one of the best ways. Think about like I, I've got my again. I keep bringing up my daughter, three and a half months old. All she knows how to do right now is watch. Mm-hmm. All she knows how to do is watch and learn. It's a big one. Ooh, That's Mike it. Hit it right on she's, the nose she's, there. Kids don't do what you say. They do, they do what, what you do. Yeah. Amen. Amen. They do. That's exactly it. And that's how she's going to learn how to walk. That's how she's going to learn how to crawl. She's going to watch what we're doing. She's trying to talk. She's trying to imitate. She's mm-hmm. trying to mimic what I'm doing, what my wife's doing, right? So what are you doing in your every single day? And that's a hard one. But I've got a, a quote that I always look at. I have it written down. It says, little eyes are watching. Mm-hmm. Little eyes are watching. And it just reminds me that she's watching me nonstop, right? She's watching me nonstop. So what and are you doing? What, what am I doing? Uh, am, am I getting up and doing the things I'm supposed to do? Am I reading? Am I journaling? Am I if I want them her to uh, grow up in a faith filled family? Am I am I praying? Am I reading my Bible? Am I journaling? Am I doing all those little things that I want her to do? Am I eating right? Am I whatever it is? Am I exercising? Even with your spouse too, like it yeah. can work that way. Absolutely. You know, if, you, if you ride your spouse on doing something, mm-hmm. hey, you gotta you gotta wash the dishes, like. Just do it, mm-hmm. you know, do it. Model it. it. It hardly ever works well when you just tell somebody to do something and then expect it. Yep. Show them, show them, coach them, and show them the path, right? Most people don't want to just go blaze their own trail, but if you go blazing down a trail yourself, they'll follow along, right? Or at least they'll be more apt to, more comfortable to. So that's one of the biggest things. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's start an exercise program. Do it with them. Do it with them. Do it with them. Show them, hey, you know, I think it's so important to, to get healthy and to get outside and play or whatever it is. You got to stay off Netflix. Whatever it is, you've got to show them first the importance of it. Because if you if you just tell them, that doesn't mean anything. Telling them is not going to do anything. I, I love this quote. Uh, when I was out, that was a little bit a little bit ago. When it was it earlier in the year, I was out at a mentorship and Drew Brees and uh, Steve Weatherford were out there. And uh, I forget which one of them said it, but Either way, two former NFL guys, well, Drew's still playing, and he said, your kids won't listen to a single thing you say, but watch everything you do. I think that was Weatherford. That might have been Weatherford. I think that was Steve. They won't listen to a thing you say, but watch everything you do. Mm-hmm. And, man, imagine if you lived your life like you had a camera on you, and the only way that your kids or grandkids or great-grandkids would know how to be successful was mimicking and watching this Ooh. video of you doing whatever Ooh. you do. We're getting deep right. now, baby. Yeah, we are. We're getting a little bit deeper. <laughs> We're getting but a little emotional and like, crucible right now. Yeah, this is like the good stuff. This is the stuff that like really changes lives yeah. and changes legacies. Like it's not just about like my kid getting good grades. No, it's about who they're going to become after their school and after they play their sport. Like and what they're going to do with their families and their kids. Like, like it can change with you, right? Mm-hmm. So that's the thing. You can decide right now. Decide right now what it is. But it goes back to that vision. What is that vision? What do you want your legacy to be? What do you want your kid's legacy to be? Like, what is that going to be? And it takes you taking action on that and and modeling it first. And, man, that can be be so, so hard. So hard. Um, But, man, that's – what what, cherish the challenge. Cherish the challenge right there. You know, that's when we get better. We get better doing the tough stuff. We get better doing the tough stuff. And it's so hard. But hey, good. I'm glad it's tough because oh, yeah, that's when we get tough. better. That's when we get better. So I like it. Whew, Joe, there we do go. You think Christian Yelich being in the home run derby will mess him up for the second half? Nah, I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I think it'll be good. I don't. Th- yeah, like the way the way hitting is now, people don't understand. Like, it's the same exact swing. Yeah, it's the same swing. I love you, it. You don't have to do anything different to create elevation. No, that'll be fine. You don't have to do anything different. Boom. So there we go. So those are our top four ways uh, to get the most out of your kids. Help them create a vision. 
help set those guardrails. Remember, give, give that buffer time, right? Give that buffer time 10, 15, 20 minutes, but communicate it. Have a, hey, have a family rule or whatever you want to call it. Like, hey, this is going to be our time for uh, – your, your pity party time or whatever. I don't know what you want to call it, but like <laughs> have your pity party time and, you know, doing that. Catch them doing great things and then do it yourself. Do it yourself. Those are our top four ways uh, to get the most out of your kids. So that way, maybe this summer, you don't have a wasted summer. It's not a, mm-hmm. another wasted summer of like, oh, we didn't do anything. No, we're going to make the most of it. Uh, let, me, let, me get, let me get this little one in here. Special surprise. Special here we guest. go. Here we go. Special guest. We special got special guest. guest. Here she is. Da, 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 da. Oh, get her in. Get her special, in the video. There we go. Special guest. There she is. Say what's happening, Aria. Say what's happening. This is my little one. Look, and she's just watching everything we do. Yep. Right there. Right there. So this is the one that I'm working so hard for. You better get your mind right. Rocking and rolling. Look, she's like, what are all these cameras doing up here? <laughs> I like it. I love it. Cherish the challenge. So, though, whose birthday is it? Minnie Manny. Minnie I like Manny. that. Happy I love birthday, it. Manny. Sorry, my daughter touched buttons. Hey, I like that, Galen. Byung, you still on? What's happening, baby? What's our favorite sport? I'm a big baseball, baseball and uh, rugby. rugby. Boom, there we go. Baseball and rugby. Those are the two that I'll watch the most. Mm-hmm. But I just like sports in general. I, I just like sports. to compete. I love sports so much. Look, she's hungry. There she, she is. She's trying to get the gains. Gorilla Mike, yes, sir. There she is. She's big. getting ready to do some bicep curls. Yeah, she, she's got another... Uh, I think she's got eight more sets, eight more sets of bicep curls. So uh, I love it. I love it. Well, that's all we got for today. Again, top four ways, trying to get the most out of your kid. There we go. Be sure to share this. Be sure to Mm -hmm. like share this. If if there's any other parents out there that are like wanting to get more out of their kids, be sure to share this. Don't keep the information for yourself. If we can create a movement of this and have kids just feeling great and being empowered and feeling great, all the time, doing great stuff, feeling motivated. Oh, let's and all these do videos it. are going up on YouTube, yeah. right? All these videos, we're, we're uh, putting them all up on YouTube. So we have a, uh, a YouTube channel out there, so you can always search that and uh, go through some of all the old ones that we've yeah. got. So uh, anyways, love you guys. Thanks so much for Thank popping you. on. We got Come Aria here. Hand. Boom. Aria, give him a little cheer. Man, she's just chowing on that hand. Yeah, I like chowing. it. She's, she's getting her gains. Down. So love yeah. you guys. Happy Fourth of July. Happy Fourth. There we go. Happy Fourth. Love you guys. Have a great, wonderful, awesome weekend. Love you guys. We'll see you. Peace.